Yeah. Uh, Brother Munir says, is there anything about the funeral on how to how to pray it? Or does it not exist? It never exists in the Quran. Let me give you an example. Now, for anybody, excuse me, for anybody doing funeral prayer in Islam, anybody you find doing funeral prayer in Islam is a mushrik. Anybody. I mean no disrespect is the truth. First of all, a mushrik who does funeral prayer. Now let me tell you why. According to chapter 16 of the Quran, I'm going to show you something interesting. According to chapter 16 of the Quran, verse 28, I'm answering your question, brother Munir Udin, right? I'm answering your question. According to the Quran, chapter 16, verse 28 to 29, listen what God says concerning somebody who is dying as a disbeliever or a transgressor. Listen what God says. Allazira yatawafahumul malaikatu zalimi amfusihim wa alkahu salama ma kunna na'amalu min su'i bala inna Allah alimun bima kuntum ta'amalun. Then verse 29. فَرْخُلُوا الْأَبْوَابَ جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا فَلَبِسَا مَثْوَالْ مُتَكَبِّرِينَ Now this is what God says. Those to whom the angels will cause their death in wronging their souls, thus they will offer submission. They will offer submission to the angels. The angels will not accept. We did not do any wrong. This is what you tell the angels. Then the angels will say, certainly, indeed, God is aware of what you were doing. Then the angels will tell them, so enter the gates of hell eternally therein, and the abode of the arrogant is rigid. Right? This is what the angels will tell the person. So if this person was dying as a disbeliever and going to hell, you the one doing funeral prayer for him. How does that funeral prayer help this dead man? Somebody, an angel already told he's going to hell. Now you are doing Salat al Janaza for him. Ask yourself a question. How does the Salat al Janazah help this person who already the angels already told him is going to help? Are you with me? Now, if also the person is a believer, let me tell you why Salat al Janazah is useless. If the person is a believer, Salat al Janazah is useless. Let me show you again. So, in the same chapter 16, verse 32, this is what God says. Those whom the angels will cause their death in goodness, there the angels will say to them, Salamu alaikum, peace be upon you. Enter the garden for what you have done. Enter the garden for what you have done. That is at the time of death, when the angels are taking the soul away. This is what they tell you, the recipient, that this is where you are going. This is where you are going. Remember, God's words does not change. God will not tell you you are going to hell. Then after one hour, because they do night uh, salat al janaza for you, funeral prayer, then the angels will come by and say, hey, you know what? Uh, your people prayed for you, so now you are going to heaven. You are no more going to hell. After getting all the dirty slaps. Then if you are going to paradise, already the angels told you, hey, man, you are going to heaven. Then after three minutes, because somebody did a funeral prayer and they made a mistake, so the angels will come back and say, hey, man, the heaven is no more for you. You are going to hell because your people did some shirk in your Salat al Janaza. It doesn't help anything. If Salat al Janaza was beneficial, God will order this, the brother of uh, the two sons of Adam when the one keep the order. God will have ordered them to pray for each other when the other one died. Do you get my point? So, Salatul Janaza is no, nothing to be found in the Quran. No scholar on earth can bring you anything called Janaza in the Quran. Neither can they bring you anything which says you should pray for the dead, for God to save the dead. So if God will not save the dead, whether you pray for him or you don't pray for him, it's the same thing. If he's going to hell, he's going to hell. If he's going to paradise, he's going to paradise. The most beneficial thing is to give respect to the dead and bury him in a nice manner. That is all. But there's nothing like pray for the dead, funeral prayer for the dead. It doesn't help.
So if you are doing it, refrain. Only a mushrik does it because Sahih Bukhari told him to do so. I'm telling you for a fact. You understand? So anybody doing Salat al Janazah, just ask them, why do you do funeral prayer? What, what, how does it help the dead? Just ask this question to anybody, right? Uh, Dean Nat is saying, interesting, but if the angel led him to the garden, then why are we waiting on the day of judgment? Uh, Dean Nat, let me show you something. I take you to chapter 23, verse 99 to 100. Chapter 23, verse 99 to 100. Now, when the angel tells the person to go to, you are going to paradise or you are going to hell, it doesn't mean straight you go and enter. No, this is how it happens. Let me explain to you. Now, chapter 23, verse 99 to verse 100. When the angels tell you you are going to hell, it doesn't mean you go straight and go and enter hell. No, you go to a transit zone to wait. I will explain that point to you. So, chapter 23, verse 99 to 100, it says what? Until when death comes to one of them, he says, Lord, send me back. When the person dies, he will now tell God, send me back. Then God says that I may, then the person will say that I may act righteous in what I have left behind. Nay, indeed, it is a word he is stating, but behind him is a partition. God will put as barzakh, barzakhum, that is a partition. Until the day of what? Resurrection. He will have a partition behind him. You understand? He will have a partition between him and the world. So he cannot interfere in the world, but he knows he's going to hell because he's already been told he's going to hell. So now he will be there lamenting, telling God to send me back, send me back till the day of judgment. Right? So I give an example. When you go to the airport and you're traveling, you go with your boarding pass, everything, you check in. When you check in with your luggage, everything, they give you their boarding pass. But you go, you already know you are going to the flight, but you are not going to enter yet. You go and wait before the door is open, before you enter. But because you have made the check-in already, since they have given you your boarding pass and everything, you already know you are going to the flight. Do you get my point? But you go and wait again before they open the door of the flight before you enter. It doesn't mean since you have been told enter, so that means you are going to enter straight. No, that is not the point. Do you get my point? So similarly, when a believer dies, his soul is with God, but it doesn't mean that he's in paradise yet. You wait till the day of judgment, then the doors will be open for you to enter. Do you get my point? So this is how it works.